Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Maitre du Temple Chapter 1 Round Transparence. This ultimate grand complication can be seen and purchased on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale extra high-res images for your desktop, and of course, complete pricing details for this immense mono-pusher chronograph by retrograde GMT day-date moon phase tourbillon watch. Quite simply, we have a lot to talk about when we're talking about this timepiece. And speaking of the concept of wrist real estate, which we often use to describe the presence and physical area of a wristwatch on the wrist, honestly, this watch takes the concept of wrist real estate to an entirely new level, because with an original retail price of $600,000, we are quite literally within the realm of high-end housing. Now, the watch on my wrist is simply immense. In case you're wondering, and I'm sure First, you're wondering about mass rather than measurements. 300 grams, or for those of us who are still populating 19th century economies, 10.5 ounces. Physically, it's just as big as you suspect. Now, a very conservative measurement across the case, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, not including pushers, not including the crown, not including the mono pusher for the chronograph, measures 50 millimeters. That's, that's the length of my wrist. 50 millimeters along the lengthwise direction. Across the wrist, it's an incredible 62 millimeters from extremity to extremity. In terms of thickness, true, there are other watches that are 17 and a half millimeters thick, although that's toward the top of the scale for any timepiece. But in combination with this much weight and physical area, quite simply, this timepiece is in a class by itself. Now, what you get is a lot, but it's a lot of finery, it's a lot of refinement, it's a lot of incredible craft investment. And it starts with an immense monotone stitch black alligator leather strap, and I have a feeling it took the entire alligator who ate Captain Hook to make this thing. It's paired with a gorgeous twin trigger, double deployant, two-tone clasp, and as you can see, it features a hooded shape that somewhat mirrors the flanks of the case, so there's a little bit of stylistic parallelism going on there, but fortunately the clasp is very heavy to act as a counterweight to this watch on the wrist, and believe me, it needs it. However, it's not simply a big brute. It does have a remarkable amount of nuance and detail along the flank. Notice the extended bevel of the case flank, the alternating use of satin finished or brushed segments with polished segments. Quite honestly, the designers did a very good job of breaking up the visual mass of the watch, but when you're looking at something this big and complicated, there's only so much you can do. It's never going to look petite, it's never going to be elegant, but it can be immensely entertaining and engrossing. And Honestly, the Transparence edition of the Chapter 1 is the most engrossing because it takes the front side of the caliber, the Manufacture Movement SHC02, with 558 parts and 58 jewels, and it turns that front side ordinarily obscured on the conventional Chapter 1, and it makes it part of the style of the dial. You can see that all of the elements, including jewel sinks, screw heads, slots that are cam that are camfered, honestly, jewel sinks that are beautifully mirror polished, interior angles that are sharp and crisp, as well as the black polish on the tourbillon bridge and the tourbillon cage. All of that is gloriously portrayed. Now you have the crystal covering the watch, you have the sapphire that acts as the base for the dial with the twin retrogrades of the GMT and the date, as well as the minutes register at 12 o'clock, and then you have the sapphires covering the roller drums at 6 o'clock for the day and at 12 o'clock for the moon phase with stars, and yes, it does glow gloriously at night. And then you have on the back yet another shaped sapphire covering the caliber itself, so five sapphires in total. There is a lot going on with this watch. Now, here's the thing. There were three fathers to this timepiece, four if you count Maitre du Temple founder Stephen Holtzman. The brand itself emerged in 2005. The concept was to take master watchmakers and to get them to act in collaboration in the creation of grand complications. And they came out swinging with the chapter one. Now, this is one of only 11 Chapter 1 round transparence models built, but all of the Chapter 1s featured work invested by Christophe Claret, Peter Speakmarin, and Roger Dubuis. 
but especially Christophe Claret. I'll get to that in a moment. Now, it, Roger Dubuis' contributions most notably are the use of a retrograde system to convey the date and the GMT. This is something for which he was known during his days as a complications hired gun for Patek Philippe and later his own eponymous manufacturer. But he also did a little bit of work in this regard for Harry Winston in its early days as a watchmaker. So that's Roger Dubuis. Uh, Peter Speak Marin, you can actually see in the filigree style of the tourbillon cage and the complete rounded tourbillon bridge, black polished, that his contribution is largely in the area of the tourbillon architecture and finish, as well as the shape of the case with its stepped bezel and its unique lugs. You can see a little bit of Speak Marin's work there. Finally, Christophe Claret, and he's the man who has to be considered the captain of the ship, because in the words of one more charismatic than I, Christophe Claret is not a businessman, he's a businessman. True, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but Christophe Claret is also a manufacturer, not just a watchmaker, and he was responsible, through his agency, of designing and industrializing the production of this watch. So again, the lion's share going to Christophe Claret, he of the Opus 4. Now, the movement is spectacular on both sides. One of the features that I love most is that it is a lateral clutch column wheel chronograph. And if that sounds a little bit old fashioned, well, you're exactly right. And it's because the column wheel right under my thumb interacts with the lateral clutch coupling of the chronograph. And you can see it moving back and forth. You can see it when it stops. And you can see when the hammer falls to reset the chronograph. Quite frankly, if you want the most handsome chronograph mechanism, you want a column wheel with a lateral clutch and a manual winding movement to show everything and obscure nothing. And again, you can see the operation of the system in glorious hi-fi on this case back. The finishing is everything you would expect. As I mentioned, gorgeous mirrored, mirrored, yes, anglage on every bridge, every leather, every single moving component. And black polish, yes, on the tourbillon cage and the bridge, but also on the head of every single individual screw. There's a tight and even perlage across the entirety of the base plate and a beautifully textured Cote de Genève across the bridge. This is as good as it gets with a straight grained dressage across all of the chronograph levers and a beautiful circular graining on all of the wheels. So this watch is a lot. It's like an excessively rich, five, six, seven course meal that also includes dessert and not just one. This is a watch that has it all and from a mechanical standpoint, a great deal to offer. A three hertz, 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate, plus an exceptional 60 hour power reserve considering the power draw of the tourbillon, of the barrels that display the moon phase and the day, the twin retrogrades. It's quite amazing that the manufacturer managed to get 60 hours of power reserve out of this watch. Now the pushers for the different functions are unique in their operation as well as their labeling. And I say that because, well, quite frankly, they spell it out for you. You have a day, you have a date, you have a moon phase, you have a GMT. And of course the chronograph being a mono pusher is actuated through a coaxial pusher located on the crown. Now the watch features a unique combination of roller drum, which has become a signature of Maitre du Temps, and it also features retrogrades again in homage, that word, to Roger Dubuis. Now I'll show you something pretty cool. You look here and you can see the day. And now I can't simply press it and roll the drum. I have to both press it and I have to slide. So you can't accidentally actuate it. You see how the pusher is designed so that you simultaneously slide the insert up and then you push it down. So you can't push it, you have to slide and push. So it can't accidentally be shuffled. And now, you see, I also have the date. And with the date, you see I also have a retrograde. This is, quite frankly, about as much watch as anyone can produce. Anyone can pack into a single coherent case combination. This watch is spectacular. It's also probably what Emperor Palpatine would wear, so it's not for the shy or the bashful. However, if your taste for watches and your budget runneth over, consider the Maitre du Temp Chapter 1 Round Transparence, available exclusively on our website.